Hi. So what we've got here is an example on a particle sliding down a rough inclined plane. And if you'd like to give this a try, then just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, so uh, what we've got here is a lifeboat. It slides down a straight ramp inclined at an angle of 15 degrees to the horizontal. And the lifeboat has a mass of 800 kilograms and the length of the ramp is 50 meters. The lifeboat is released from rest at the top of the ramp and is moving with a speed of 12.6 meters per second when it reaches the end of the ramp. And by modeling the lifeboat as a particle and the ramp as a rough inclined plane, we've got to find the coefficient of friction between the lifeboat and the ramp. Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is to start by drawing a sketch. So we'll take our ramp, let's say it's something like this, OK? And uh, we'll have the horizontal there. It's inclined, we're told, at an angle of 15 degrees to the horizontal. So mark that in as 15 degrees. We've got our particle, which is taken to be the lifeboat now, OK? sliding down this ramp. So what we'll do is we'll just mark that in as a block, something like that, OK? Now, we're told that the lifeboat, OK, has a mass of 800 kilograms. So if we mark in the weight, OK, we're going to have that acting downwards. It's going to be mg, so that will be the mass, 800 multiplied by g, g the acceleration due to gravity, which I'm going to take as 9.8 meters per second per second. And uh, the units will be newtons. We've got a contact force with the plane, and that contact force acts perpendicularly away from the plane, okay, acting on the particle here. I'm going to call that R for a reaction, and we'll put the units in R newtons. Now, it's sliding down the plane, so we have friction acting on the particle because it's a rough plane. And friction, remember, always opposes motion. So if it's sliding down the plane, then friction will act up the plane. And it will have reached its limiting value because it's moving. That limiting value is always given by the coefficient of friction, mu, okay, the thing that we got to find here, find the coefficient of friction. It's given by mu times the reaction here, mu r. So I'm going to write that as mu r newtons. I also want to put in the fact that the lifeboat is released from rest at the top of the ramp. So I'll show that with a green arrow. OK, it was released from rest. So we'll have that as zero meters per second. And it slides down the plane here. And we're told that after a distance of 50 meters, let's say from here down to there, let's just mark that to the side there, 50 meters, we're told that it's moving with a speed of 12.6 meters per second. So when it gets down to here, we'll just put an arrow there, OK? When it's at this point, it's now moving at 12.6 meters per second. So there's been a change in speed. So if there's been a change in speed, it, there must be an acceleration. So it's gaining speed in this direction. So we'll have the acceleration there. We'll call it A, OK? It's a double arrow, A meters per second per second. OK, so that's marked on. We've got all our speeds. We've got the acceleration. We've got the forces. We've got the distance. Now, when you're doing questions on inclined planes, it's traditional to set up your directions perpendicular to the plane. So that's this one here. I'll just mark on here with a dotted line, OK? We'll just put that on like so. Dotted line there. And also to consider parallel to plane. So we'll set up a dotted line something like that, OK? So we've got this cross, if you like, going on here. We need a few angles. And 
we should by now know that this angle here is always the same as the angle of the plane. So this is going to be 15 degrees. OK, we've got that. Now we need to find this coefficient of friction. So how are we going to do that? Well, the coefficient of friction is going to require the, the well we, we need to work out what r is because we're going to eventually come on to the using this force so we're going to need to work out what r is the normal reaction so the best place to start in this problem i think is to look at resolving perpendicular to the plane i'm going to take outwards as being positive okay away from the plane as being positive it's up to you. You could take into the plane as being positive, but I'm going to take outwards purely because I know that my reaction R is going to be a positive term. Now, when we apply resolving, we're looking at Newton's second law. That is force equals mass times acceleration. So I'm going to look at the overall resultant force acting away from the plane. So all of R acts away from the plane. So that's going to be R. OK. As for mu r, this force here, it's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving. So perpendicular forces have no effect. So we can neglect that force. But the weight here, 800 g newtons, that is inclined to this direction. It's not perpendicular. So what we need to think of is splitting this force into two components. And that would have components down the plane and into the plane. Now the one down the plane we're not interested in because it's going to be perpendicular to this direction. All that we're interested in is the one that acts in towards the plane, okay, down in this direction. And because it contains the angle, it's going to be cosine. If it excludes the angle, it's sine, but it includes the angle between the force and the direction here. So it's 800 g cosine 15 degrees, and it acts in the opposite sense to the positive sense there. So it's minus 800 g cosine, or cos for short, of 15 degrees. And this is the overall force now acting on the particle. And in this perpendicular sense, that resultant force is zero. It's not moving outwards from the plane or inwards to the plane, okay? So it's in what we call relative equilibrium. Now, we, all we've got to do is rearrange this then to get R. So if I add 800 G to both sides, or 800 G cos 15, I should say, R equals 800 G cos of 15 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode rather than radians mode. So you work out that and you should find you get 7572.858 and so on. That's taking G to be 9.8. Okay, so that'd be measured in Newtons. So we've got our reaction here. So where do we go to next? Well, we'll just border this off, okay? So if we come up there, what we are going to do fairly shortly is look at resolving now in a perpendicular direction to this. That is in the direction of acceleration down the plane. Always resolve in the direction of acceleration. But I can see that because this particle here is accelerating, we're going to need to have that acceleration in that equation. And we haven't got it at the moment. So what I need to do is now consider going downwards as positive and considering a SUVAT-based equation. Remember, SUVAT is S for displacement, U, initial velocity, V, final velocity, A, acceleration, and T, time. Now, if I take downwards as positive, going from here to here, was a displacement of 50 meters. So we just pop that in as 50. U, the initial velocity, was zero. V, the final velocity, was 12.6.
and the acceleration, well, we want to find that. And as for t, the time it takes to go from here to here, well, we're not given that and we don't want it. So I'm just going to remove that from our list. So we're looking for an equation then that connects s, u, v and a together. And that equation you should be familiar with is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. All right. So if we put in our values, we now therefore have for v 12.6 all squared equals u squared. Well, that's just zero, so I'll leave that out. And then you've got 2 times a times s. So you've got 2 times the acceleration, which we're trying to find, times s, which is 50. OK? So to get the acceleration a, all I've got to do is work out 12.6 squared and divide it by 2 times 50. In other words, divide it by 100. And if you do that, you'll find that you get a to be 1.5876. 1.5876 meters per second per second. Now I'm in a position to look at resolving down the plane in the direction of acceleration. So we'll just mark up here that I'm going to resolve downwards, taking down the plane as being positive. Very important that idea, okay? So we're applying Newton's second law, in other words, force equals mass times acceleration. So what is the resultant force down the plane? Well, first of all, we've got part of the weight acts down the plane, okay? That part of the weight, that component, is going to be 800 g sine 15 degrees. Remember, we've got the 15 degrees here. That is included in this angle here. But this one here excludes the 15 degrees. So it's going to be sine. So we have 800 g. OK, let's just pop it over here. OK, 800. That wasn't very good, that 800. So 800 g sine of 15 degrees. OK. Now, as for the component of 800 g into the plane, that we don't have to worry about because that's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in along the plane. But I do notice that all of mu r acts in this direction. OK, along the plane, but it's in the opposite sense to what we've selected as positive. So that's going to be minus mu r, minus mu times r. But I can get r as being this value here. So we'll pop that in there as being 7572.858. OK, and so on. As for the force r, well, that's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. So I don't have to worry about R. So this is the resultant force acting down the plane on the particle. And that's going to cause the particle to accelerate. So this is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The mass, we know, is 800 kilograms. So that's 800 multiplied by the acceleration, and we've just found that out here, okay? It's positive 1.5876, okay? So, there's our equation. All we need to do is just rearrange this for mu. Now, if you do rearrange this for mu, okay, if I just take the 800 g sine 15, that is taking g to be 9.8. What I get is 2029.1413 and so on. OK. I'm going to add this term to both sides. So imagine that's on the other side. If I take this term here, work out 800 times 1.5876 and take it away from both sides, you'll find that that term there comes to 1270.08. Okay? That would equal mu times 
this value here. But if I divide both sides by that value, we can pop it underneath here, and that will be 7572.858. Okay, and so on. Okay, I've had to do it like this fairly quickly because I want to get this on the one screen. So I hope you appreciate that. If you work this out then in one go on your calculator, you should find that mu comes out to be 0.1002 and so on. And as a valuable check, always expect mu to be greater than zero and generally less than one. It can go above one, but it's extremely rare for that to happen. So it's always a good check for, to check that that comes out like that. Okay, now if we round this to some suitable degree of accuracy, then this is going to equal 0 0.100 to three significant figures. There's no units in this for mu, so just leave it as 0 0.100 to three SF. Okay?